One of the most common questions I get about my Reflash DaVinci 1.0a is what are the settings in Repetier that I use to get it to print? Well, I'm going to show you that today. So now let me show you my settings. To get there, you click on the printer settings icon at the top of the Repetier software. And the first tab you come to is the connection tab. This is where you select the port that you're going to connect to, or you can just select auto like I did and let the software pick it. Then you got to connect at the proper baud rate, and that's what I did here. 230,400 is the baud rate recommended to communicate with the DaVinci. The transfer protocol I set to auto detect. And then reset on connect is Dewey native USB port. That's the one that I use and works well. Send emergency command and reconnect on the reset on emergency. And I increase the buffer to 127. This helped with communication. Smaller than that, you might get some disconnects. Now some people have actually checked this box that says use ping pong communication, which is really a back and forth command communication. I haven't needed that, so I've left it unchecked. Next is the printer tab. And under this tab is where you really set most of the mechanical or manual movements of the printer itself. The travel feed rate I left alone at 4800, but the z-axis feed was way too slow, so I increased it to 500. That way I could drop the bed a lot faster, and that was really helpful. The manual extrusion and manual retraction, that's if you want to use the manual controls to remove the plastic filament. I left those alone. The default extruder temperature, I lowered the 200 and the heated bed to 55. I don't know if this did a whole lot, but I felt safer putting these in so when the thing boots up, that's where it at least starts. And then there's an ability for the printer to send back temperature information to your laptop and it'll graph so you can see it. So if you check that box, that enables it for both the extruder and a bed temp and you can set how often you want it to do it. I set it to three seconds, you could probably do it slower. The next section, though, is really important. This bottom section is where you actually set the park position. I set the X and Y coordinates to minus 33 and minus 12. This positions the extruder right above the dump box, or where it normally would be on a stock DaVinci. Then I set the Z min minimum to 150 millimeters. This dropped the bed down to a perfect height so I can remove the print. So then I made sure the box was checked to go to park position after the job is done. So what that did is when the print was done, it automatically dropped the bed down so I could lift the print off, just like a stock DaVinci. Very, very helpful. Then I checked all the boxes to invert the direction controls, and that seemed to help on my printer. The next tab is the extruder tab. And I didn't do a whole lot here, but there's a few things that are pretty important. First, you want to select one for the extruder, because there's only one extruder on my machine. The max extruder temperature was left at 280 and bed temperature 120. Now these may be a little bit too high. I probably need to check this, but I've had no issues with it. Max volume per second, honestly, I, I don't know what that is, so I left it alone. But the diameter, you want to make sure it's 0.4, because that's the diameter of the extruder. Now the blue color here, that just determines the color of the chart when it tells you the temperature of the extruder. The offsets for X and Y and temperature, I left those all at zero and everything's been fine. The next tab is the printer shape. And there's several in this drop down menu and I tried to play with it, but I found that the classic printer works best for me. And I set the home position to X minimum, Y minimum, Z minimum, which really was X at zero, Y at zero, Z at zero which turned out to be the back right corner right by the extruder. That's the home position. So then I set the max to the limit of the bed, 200 millimeters. So X is 200, Y is 200. And then I described what the size of the bed was, 200 width, 200 depth, and 200 height, which is the size of the bed or print area for the DaVinci printer. Now the last tab was the advanced tab and actually I just left this alone because it looks like you can do some interesting things for your slicer after your slicer runs, some G-code additions, but I left it alone.
So that's the printer setup. You just click apply and then OK and everything will be saved. And then you'll have manual control. If you click on the P button, that'll take you to that park position that we created. There'll actually be a minus 33x, a minus 12y because they're to the right of the zero position, but z will actually show a positive 150 when that bed goes all the way down. Now if you just want to home the x, click on the x home, or the y home, or the z home to, to home just those axes. Click on the house by itself and all of them will take it to the home position. So that's it. That's the settings that I use on my Repetier machine. And I'm not claiming that these are exact or perfect. I just know that they work for me. But what's more important is what your configuration settings are for the slicer you're using. Whether it be Slicer, Cura, Simplify 3D. How you set up your print will depend on what kind of material you're printing with and what your print is. Is it small? Is it large? What kind of resolution do you need? All that factors into how good the prints are that comes out of this machine. Not just the repetier settings. There's so much more to it. In fact, I'm going to cover that topic in my next Filament Friday episode. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned and watch for that. So that's all I got for now. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching and you'll get notification of my future videos, such as Filament Friday. And if you want to help support this channel for helpful tips like this, please consider donating at least a dollar a month to my Patreon account. There's a link up here. Every little bit helps. So that's it. That's all I got for now. I'll see you next time.